When the Bible says that Adam knew his wife, it is speaking of sex. This is the first mention of sex in the Bible. And this begins the first generation of man born into sin. It seems like Eve still has a spirit of gratitude and thankfulness towards God, as she seemed to understand she owed her life and everything to God. The first birth is Cain, so this was probably an uncertain moment for Adam. And Eve because they were made fully grown, so when Eve says a man from the Lord, she... And Adam may have thought the child would be fully grown, as well. Another child is born, Abel. The two brothers worked the ground as Cain was a tiller of ground, but Abel was a keeper of sheep. Cain and Abel offered offerings to God, but God respected Abel's offerings, but did not respect Cain, and this made Cain angry. Abel brought an offering of blood which was the firstborn of his flock, and of their fat, which meant Abel's offering was extra special as fat was prized as luxury, but Cain's offerings were fruit of the ground, but Cain's offering was the effort of dead religion. Abel gave offerings made in faith out of a desire to worship God. Again, Cain was angered because of God's acceptance of Abel's offerings. And God knew he was angry and warned him about the anger. God was telling Cain that he could control the power of sin from over his life if he would allow for God to master him, but this did not take as we see another first, murder. Cain murders Abel because he was jealous and mad at his brother's righteous offers. Like we saw with Adam and Eve, God confronted Cain asking the question, Where is Abel your brother? Cain responded, Am I my brother's keeper? Here is another example of God knowing the answer. But giving someone an opportunity to make things right, but like Adam, Cain refused to do so. Cain murdered his brother in cold blood not for anything Abel had committed against him, but out of jealousy. This was a first for mankind. And like we saw with the fall of man, God puts a curse for rebellion. God tells Cain that he is cursed from the earth, and that his brother's blood cries out to me, which is a way of saying that unpunished murderers. Blood defiles the land. Adam was tossed from the Garden of Eden as a result of his actions. And for Cain, he would not be able to find a resting place on the earth. Cain makes a statement about his pain being more than he can bear. He does not apologize about his sin, but only his punishment. Unfortunately, I think this would be the case with many people as I've known people who did wrong and was only apologetic and sorry because they were caught, not because they committed wrong. I like what God does here as he puts a punishment on anyone who kills Cain. And it could be due to the low population of the earth at the time. Remember, Adam and Eve and Cain and Abel and a few unnamed sons. And daughters were not a big lineage, but God put a mark upon Cain. But we do not know exactly what that mark was. We read about Cain moving away and marrying and starting a family. Cain, on earth anyway, was a success as he did build a city which was the beginning of industry. This city, as it would be fair to gauge, was not God-centered but heavily man-centered. For the rest of the chapter, we read about the generations that would come as society is advancing quickly. While I do not want to get too specific about the genealogies here, Lamech is the first bigamist in history, as he had two wives which goes against God's original plan. For marriage, or one man and one woman. Lamech commits murder, which is not the first murder. But it does show that humanity is only getting worse, not better. Despite Lamech's arrogance and his lust for his wives, he is never heard from in the Bible. As mentioned earlier, Adam and Eve had children that were not named. But one that was named specifically was Seth, who was worthy of mention because he was to replace Abel. The ending of the chapter could be, although we are not directly told, the first revival in human history 
as people were calling on the name of the Lord. But again, we are not told so this is only speculation. But it's good to know that as bad as society had gotten, there was still praise and worship happening. Spurgeon explains at Genesis chapter 4 and verse 9, Am I my brother's keeper? Cain displayed a shameful tone of presumptuous impudence in his insulting reply to the Lord God. If it had not been on record in the page of inspiration, we might almost have doubted whether a man could speak so impudently when actually conscious that God himself was addressing him. Men blaspheme often in a most terrible fashion. But it is usually because they forget God and ignore his presence, but Cain was conscious that God was speaking to him. He heard him say, Where is your brother Abel? And yet he dared, with the coldest impertinence, to reply to God, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? As much as to say, Do you think that I have to keep watch over him as he? watches over his sheep? Am I also as shepherd as he was? And am I to take as much care of him as he did of a crippled lamb? The unfriendly impudence of Cain is an indication of the state of his heart which led up to his murdering his brother, and it was also partly a result of his having committed that terrible crime. He would not have accomplished the brutal deed of bloodshed if he had not first cast off the fear of God and been ready to defy his creator. Having committed murder, the hardening influence of sin upon Cain's mind must have been intense. And thus, he was able to speak to God's face what he felt within his heart. And to say, Am I my brother's keeper? This goes a long way to explain what has puzzled some persons, namely, the amazing calmness with which great criminals will appear in court. I remember having heard it said of one who had undoubtedly committed a very violent murder, that he looked like an innocent man. He stood up before his accusers as calmly and quietly, they said, as an innocent man could do. I remember feeling at the time that an innocent man would probably have not been calm. The distress of mind felt by an innocent man for being under such a charge would have prevented his having the coolness which was displayed by the guilty individual. Instead of its being any evidence of innocence that a man wears a shameless front when charged with a great crime, it should by wise men be considered to be evidence against him. The guilty person may seem to be dispassionate and unmoved because he had already been so unfeeling as to dip his hand in blood. O dear friends, let us avoid sin if only for the evil effect which it is upon our minds. It is poison to the heart. It cripples the conscience, drugs it, puts it to sleep, it intoxicates the judgment, and puts all the faculties, as it were, into a state of drunkenness, so that we become capable of a hideous bravery and a blind impertinence, which makes us mad enough to dare insult God to His face. Save us, O God, from having our hearts hammered to the hardness of steel by sin. And daily keep us by your grace sensible and tender before you, trembling at your word.